Your past is your teacher, but it's not a fortune teller. It's your teacher. The future is where you have to look to to make your next best decisions. Because if you're making decisions based on past you, past you will keep you stuck. Because being stuck in the past is is much less scary because you've already been there. The future is super scary because you don't know what the fuck it holds. But it could also change your life for the better. It could also be where your next breakthrough is. So I want you to think about who you want to be. How does she make decisions? What's amazing about her? And think about that. What's her growth look like? What does she learn? What does she do? It's really easy for us to remember our past. It is harder to imagine our future. But it doesn't mean just because it's harder to do, you don't do it. So I want you to close your eyes and imagine somewhere in the future who the future version of you is. What does she look like? Where does she shop? What does she eat? What does she do? How does she show up in the world? It's so important for us to think about who it is that we want to be, even as we're going through our journey, even as we're going through our own evolution and our transformation. It's important to have that visual part where it's like, I know what I want to be. I know where I want to go. Because if you don't think about who you want to be in the future, it's really easy to just get stuck in your past. Our brain is naturally conditioned to always look for evidence of things we've already done, right? That's why so many people are stuck in the past. That's why so many people can't see beyond where they've already been. So it's so important as you're losing weight, as you're going through this journey, to just really embody who she is, who the U2.0 is. And think about how she carries herself. Think about how she loves herself. How does she talk to herself? And that's who I want you to think about and embody when times get hard. When you think, I really want to eat this ice cream, but it's not on my plan. When you think, I don't want to go to the gym. Think about what would future me do? What would the version of me that's already reached her goals, what would she do in this moment? I often have to remind myself of that in the mornings when I really don't want to go to the gym, right? I had to literally ask myself, what would future Eva do, right? And so I want you to really start to envision and really visualize what does that look like? What what will your life look like when you're finally free from food? What will your life look like when you don't have to be spending so much time thinking about the scale, thinking about the food, thinking about where you were, and just focusing on where you want to be. That makes it a lot easier when things get kind of tough, right? That makes it easier to pull yourself out of a rut. Makes it easier to push yourself when you've hit a plateau. So think about her. Who is she? She's proud, right? She loves herself. And she believes in herself. And she believes in her why. And often, I talk about this on the show, having a really compelling why. Because your why ties you to your future. It ties you to that future version of you. So getting to know that future version of you is so important. It's so important, especially for those of us who dwell on our past. And I'm I'm so guilty of that. Dwelling on my past and all the things that I wish I wouldn't have done, that they wish, I wish I would have done, and all of those things. The dreams that I have that I had to let go of. It's really easy for me to also to fall back there. It's really, really easy for that to happen. But when those things happen, because I already know who I want to be, who I want to evolve into, and something that I've done, I'm constantly evolving. I'm constantly growing. When I think of myself 10 years ago, completely different person. Five years ago, completely different person. Even one year ago, I was a completely different person. And it's so important to continue to grow and continue to get to know yourself and continue to stretch yourself as you're going through this journey. Some of us don't even take the time to imagine, right? We think that imagining is in daydreaming, right? It's like what kids do, but it's not true. We have to do that. 
we have to allow our minds to think greater than who we are, think bigger than what we than where we are right now. Because that's why so many people are stuck. You know anyone who's like stuck in their ways and they're just they've been this way forever. They thought that's just how she is. I don't ever want anyone to say that about me. That's just how she is. And that's why I'm always learning. I'm always evolving. And even when I look back at who I used to be, I don't judge her. And I'm not ashamed of her, even with all the mistakes that I've made. I don't have regrets because those versions of Eva have allowed me to become the version that you see right now and will help me continue to become an even better version of myself. And it doesn't mean that something is wrong with your current self, right? It just means that there's always more. There's always more to learn. There's always more to grow. There's always more to to think about. And when we reference our past and we use our past to decide who we're going to be, that's where you get stuck in that cycle. That's where these negative thought loops really take over. And we sit and we think that we want to be confident and that we'll be confident when we get there. And that's what I really want to talk to you about today because so many people, so many of my clients come to me saying, once I lose the weight, I'll do this once I lose the weight. I will love myself once I lose the weight. I will feel confident once I lose the weight. But the problem is that confidence is created after you've tried something new. So you can't build it up in advance because you don't know, right? You don't know until you do it. And I know that sounds really basic, but it's true because so many people are like, I just, I'm just so, I don't know, I'm insecure, I don't know, I, I'll do it when I feel better about this or when I, when I have it, when I gain it. It's like confidence is not gonna fall out of the sky. It's literally trying things over and over and over again. It's literally falling and picking yourself back up. It's being courageous. It's, it's facing the fears. It's acknowledging that sometimes I'm scared, but I'm going to keep going. I do a lot of shit scared. A lot. Recording a podcast on video is very scary for me. And I've avoided it for so long because I thought when I'm more confident, I'll do it. Personally, I've had so many people say, you should be on YouTube. You should do more video. You should start a YouTube channel and, and do all of these things. And people will get to know you and really get to know like who you really are because they really, yes, you can hear my voice, but it's really different when you get to see the mannerisms and you see that I talk with my hands and you know all of those things, right? And I was so scared because I felt insecure. And I felt like, well, I don't know. Like, what if I don't like what I look like? And all of these things. And that held me back for about a year and a half. It's literally held me back until I decided this is the shit that I teach my clients. It's to believe in yourself and it's to, to go forward even if you're scared. And so what a hypocrite am I if I'm like, no, I'm scared. I'm scared to hide my, you know, and so I'm hiding behind my microphone instead of showing up. And not everything will be perfect and, and this new season won't be as polished because when I was recording without a camera, I was able to do a lot more editing so that things felt a little bit more clean because of the perfectionism. But as we know, perfection doesn't exist. And for those of us that have been chasing perfection all our lives, it's really disappointing because it doesn't exist. So we're constantly chasing a moving target. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk about future self is I had to step into my future self. And I know there's so many more women that I want to help, that I want to reach. And this will allow me to do that. And I have this goal. I want to help 1 million women lose their weight for good. That is my huge goal that I have. It might sound crazy, unrealistic, all of these things. But because I'm so passionate about that and because I want to help women not struggle like I did with the up and down and the yo-yo and the emotional eating and being so insecure and hiding and one of the things that happened with me, the reason why I think I started hiding was part of my my background is I used to sing and I used to dance. And I had huge dreams of becoming the next Jennifer Lopez. I was like, I'm going to be J-Lo. And I was in L.A. and I, I pursued that dream for 10 years until I got pregnant. And then my life changed. And I had to pivot. 
And I have literally no regrets because my son is amazing. He's just the most magical little boy in the world. But once I let that person go, I used to for a long time think that I failed. I failed. I wasn't able to reach those goals. I wasn't able to make it. And it wasn't until I really started to reframe that. Maybe I, I wasn't meant to be a famous entertainer. But what I do now, I'm also reaching millions of people. And I'm reaching people that would have never known about me or my story or the things that I'm offering through the podcast and, and offering through my services. And I think that that's just as impactful as what 20-year-old Eva wanted to do when she wanted to be famous and a singer and a dancer and an actor and do all those things. So I say all that because 20-year-old Eva would have never imagined sitting right here today. But I also wouldn't have imagined being a mom to the most amazing little boy in the whole world, right? I didn't think about those things. So even as you're thinking of your future self, as I always say, give yourself grace and compassion and pivot when you need to. And don't be so stuck to who you thought it was supposed to be and what you thought it was supposed to look like. Because sometimes we have these plans and then God has different ones. And that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned throughout my entire journey. And so I want you to think about your past is your teacher, but it's not a fortune teller. It's your teacher. The future is where you have to look to to make your next best decisions. Because if you're making decisions based on past you, past you will keep you stuck. Because being stuck in the past is, is much less scary because you've already been there. The future is super scary because you don't know what the fuck it holds. But it could also change your life for the better. It could also be where your next breakthrough is. So I want you to think about who you want to be. How does she make decisions? What's amazing about her? And think about that. What's her growth look like? What does she learn? What does she do? It's really easy for us to remember our past. It is harder to imagine our future. But it doesn't mean just because it's harder to do, you don't do it. I talk a lot about stretching, stretching yourself, stretching your mind, the thoughts that you choose to have, the intentional thoughts that you choose. And thinking about the future is only hard because you don't do it enough. So I want to offer that you start to push yourself to think more outside of what you're used to, outside of whatever box you might be in or you might think you're in. Because what's, what's important to note is that humans need something to look forward to in order to be happy. And if you don't have something to look forward to, then finding happiness becomes damn near impossible because it's really just Groundhog Day, right? You're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. And that's why we know so many people that are stuck in a rut and are miserable. I used to be a very miserable bitch. I always say that. Everything was was stressful. Everything was a problem. Everything was, a, was something that I had to like overcome. Once I started to learn all of this work, once I became a life coach and I really started to embody all of these things, and I realized that having the future me to look forward to is what will get me out of those moments when I'm in the depths of depression, when I am in the depths of insecurity, when I'm scared, I think about her. I think about the next iteration of Eva, and that's how I keep going. Think about what does future you do for fun? Where does she shop? Ask yourself these questions. It's really, really important to, to give yourself, to give your mind other things to think about besides where I've been and where I am right now. And I also want to talk about just your belief, right? Because we have to expand our belief when we're doing this type of work. Because visualization can sometimes feel very, for some people they think it's woo, which I'm, I'm all about the woo, right? But some people really think that it's like, no, that's just for like those people. It's for everybody. It's like, who do you want to be? Do you want to be the same person that you are today, right now, a year from now? I certainly don't. I want to be better. I want to be better. I want to be smarter. I want to be stronger. I want to be an even better mom, a better friend. I want to be better at everything. And I want to encourage you to start thinking about that. Start believing that the future you is there and just keep working towards that. And if and if things don't happen necessarily in the timeline that you expected it, it's okay. Nothing has gone wrong. You just keep going. Start setting yourself up for success. Start setting yourself up to be that person. What does your environment look like? Does it support the future version of you? If it doesn't, what changes do you have to make? Are you so attached to your failures and your mistakes that you allow them 
to stop you from becoming who you were meant to be. Because the future you, she embraces imperfection because she knows that perfection doesn't exist. I want to offer you to start to create the future that you want on purpose. And this is going to require that you train your brain because your brain's going to be like, what the fuck? No, this is, we don't know if this is true, right? You have to kind of suspend disbelief a little bit when you're going into visualization and thinking about who the future you is. But don't let your brain, the habit brain that's just likes habit, just likes to do the same thing over and over again. Don't let that, don't let your primitive brain hold you back. I say this all the time. It comes up all the time in weight loss because you're so used to doing certain things. Just have to break out of that. A few steps that I'll walk you through on how to do this. First, you want to just start taking action. If you have to start with just baby steps, 10 minutes of visualization, 10 minutes of moving your body, 10 minutes of journaling, start somewhere and just start taking action. Journaling is a really big thing. So I know I talk about journaling a lot and some people, many people, will say, I don't have time to journal. It's the same with everything. We make time for the things that are important. What journaling does is it helps you get out of your head. It literally helps you get the 60 to 70,000 thoughts going in your head out of them and onto paper. And think about this, about 80% of our thoughts are negative. So if that's what's going on, so if 80% of your thoughts are just circulating in your head about all the things that happened back then and this and that and all of that, if that's all you're thinking about, it's just creating these neural pathways and these thought loops. So when you journal, you're literally getting that out of your brain and you're at least able to see it on paper. And then you can start to figure out like, hey, are these thoughts that I wanna have? Are these thoughts serving me? Are these thoughts the thoughts that are going to get me to be my future self? Or are they holding me back? Set up your environment to make it easy. What do you have to get rid of? Do you have to declutter? Do you have to get rid of some shit? Do you have to stop buying certain things or stop, stop going to certain places? Are there triggers in your life that throw you off? Get rid of them. There's so many times I, I work with clients that, that they're just like, this is just how it's been. This is how it's always been. Well, you're not a tree, right? It's just like, you can, you can change. You can move. You can get rid of things that don't serve you. You can get rid of things, people, situations that future you will look back at and say, yeah, I'm glad we, I'm glad we did that. Glad we got that out of the way. And I want you to start taking action now, not after you feel motivated, not after you've, you know, figured it out, even if it's messy, especially for those of us that are perfectionists. We want everything to be perfect. I won't do this thing until everything is lined up. And that's how we miss out on so many things. That's how life passes us by, by waiting for things to be perfect. So taking actions, it's you're overriding a lot of the bullshit that your brain offers you a lot of the fear and the, all of these things that it offers you like, no, are you sure? Are you sure we should do this? Yes, Shh. we're going forward. And when it comes to journaling every day, even if it's three to five minutes a day, just do it. You have three to five minutes. Like everybody can take five minutes out of the day and write down their thoughts. Oh, I don't know what to write about. Write about that. I don't know what to write about. Start there. Just put thoughts on paper. That's really all it is. Journaling is not writing, you know, an essay that you're going to submit to someone for, for editing. Journaling is literally just, if you have nothing nice to say, write that shit down. If you don't know what to say, I don't know what to say. But let me see. This happened today or this is what I want to happen. Just get yourself into the habit of getting out of your head so that you can start making room for the future self, the future you. Also write down your goals. Something that I have my clients do, we use the four circle method where I have them get their three month goals, their one month goal, their weekly goals, and their daily goals. And I make them do that every day. And I want them to look at it every single day because when you have your goals written down, when you know exactly what you need to do, that's your guide, right? So many people are like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Start there. What can I do today to help me get closer to my future self? If you answer that question, there you have your goals, there you have your daily goals, and there you have something to journal about. So if you don't know what to journal about, journal about that. Start there, right? That's why I say it's so much simpler than what we sometimes think, right? Sometimes we think about these tools and we think about these things and it's like, oh, I just think, I don't know, I don't know where to start. Just start. And if this doesn't work, try something different. 
right? I always say just keep pivoting and keep trying new things until until it works, until it works for you. Because the thing is that when when we start to really think about how our brain works and and how our brain literally is used to habits. And in order to get different outcomes, you have to change your habits. And it really is a series of just making decisions, just small decisions. That's how you start breaking those negative cycles and those thought patterns and all of those things. But you have to start and you have to start to get to a place where you understand that your brain is used to the habits and it's going to be scared when you try something new. That's normal. It's totally normal. Fear doesn't mean stop. It's more like yield, right? Pause. It's not a stop sign. Of course, you're going to be scared. It's so normal to be scared. If you weren't scared, right, that would be not normal. The reason why our brain offers us fear is to protect us because it thinks that you're going to go do some stupid shit that gets you killed. That's it. Once you understand, like, how your brain actually works, you realize that it's just trying to keep you safe. It's just trying to, you know, habits are, are, we know what's going to happen. We do the same thing over and over again. We know what's going to happen. You try to do something different, it's scary. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how long it's going to take, but that doesn't mean don't. That doesn't mean don't go after it. So the best way to start getting to future you, you journal, visualize who she is, what does she do, where does she shop, what does she eat, how does she move her body, how does she show up? at work or in her business, in her home? How does she run her home? What type of mother is she? What type of friend is she? What type of partner is she? Think about that and then feel it. Like literally feel that. Literally feel how you will feel when you become her. Write about your future. Write about the goals that you have. And visualize yourself making it happen. Visualize yourself overcoming all of the obstacles that are going to come up because they're going to come up. Obstacles are everywhere. So there's no point in saying, oh my gosh, well, it's, I have all these things in the way. Figure out a way to get around them, to get through them. Whenever you have an obstacle, all you need is a strategy. They're just offering you to think about, how can I solve for this obstacle? Doesn't mean, oh, I have all these obstacles, I can't do it. No, you just figure out, how do we get through this one? Right? That's where you open up your brain. That's why journaling is so important because if you're stuck in your head, you won't find the solution. I know when I start getting stuck into my cycles, it's, as soon as I start writing, all, just, everything, um, just everything in my head, just start writing it down. I get so many ideas. I start thinking about all kinds of things. Once I allow myself to get out of my head and just think more clearly. And then the last thing in stepping in the future is Try to create the environment that you live in to reflect what your future self will be doing and feeling and all of those things as much as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to, you know, revamp your whole house and, you know, start getting rid of stuff if you don't want to. But if it will help you to set things up differently, if it will help you to get rid of things that no longer serve you, then start there. You want to create your environment to mimic what your future environment is going to look like, even if you're not there yet. Even if you hate where you live and you hate your job and you hate all of the things, right? Start to look at ways, how can I make this more enjoyable now? How can I make this situation that I'm in right now, how can I make this work for me until I can get out of it, until I can step into the next version of me. So whether that's cleaning up your refrigerator or organizing your closet or cleaning out your pantry or, you know, starting to make better food choices slowly, whatever that looks like, your future self probably already does those things. Your future self doesn't have distractions like that, unnecessary distractions. So imagine what she does and start doing that today. If you have to put up inspiring quotes, if you have to put up affirmations on sticky notes on your mirrors, or screenshot on your, you know, the lock screen on your phone, whatever you need to do to just always have it in plain sight. That's why I have my clients literally look at their goals every day. What are the goals that you're have that you're doing today that's going to support one week, one month, three months, and into the future? That's why it's so important to have this on paper. Write it down. Look at it every day. Remind yourself. Remind yourself what she does, what she looks like. 
how she dresses. Does she wear clothes that doesn't fit because it's too big or it's too small? Does she have raggedy panties with holes in them? Right? I don't think your future self does, right? So start living as much as you can into that. Start feeling what she does. Embody her because she's waiting for you. And the thing is, sometimes I, I hear clients that are scared to dream big, right? I'll ask them, well, you know, once we get rid of this weight, what do you want to do? What do you want your life to look like? And they don't know. They're like, I don't know. Because they've been so consumed with the struggle, so consumed with the up and down, so consumed with, with choosing suffering for a lot of us. Again, I am a, a, a witness to that because I used to do that same exact thing. So all of the things that I talk about on the show, it's because I've lived through them. And I've gone through all of I've had the obstacles. I've had the pitfalls. I've gone through all of that. And I just kept going. I just kept thinking, who, who do I want to be? Even when things get hard, who do I want to be? When things don't go the way that I want them to go. Because trust me, a lot of things don't go the way I want them to go, but I don't let that stop me. I just keep going. Your dreams and your goals, no matter how big they are, they can never hurt you. You can't dream so big that it's just unrealistic and impossible and all those things. It's just, it can't hurt you to stretch yourself. It can't hurt you to think that there is a possibility. Anything is possible. If I can create my reality with my thoughts, that means anything is possible. So thinking that your dreams can't happen, that that's hurtful. So stop. Stop hurting yourself. It's like the saying where someone's like, oh, I'm sitting on this on this nail and it hurts. Bitch, get up. Why are you still sitting there, right? It's like, get up, get off the, the thing and go. That's what's hurtful. Oftentimes we're so used to being upset and sad and unhappy and all that. We find that to be our norm. And unless you just want to be like that, which I don't think you do. Most of us don't. Most of us want to be happy. Most of us want to be growing and evolving. So if that is you, thinking that if you don't succeed, thinking that if you don't reach your goals, that makes you a failure, that is the painful part. That's the painful part of dreaming. That's when it hurts. When you make not reaching it or you make it's taking me longer than expected, when you make that mean that you're a failure. It doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means keep going. Keep going after your dreams. Decide to keep going no matter what. Remember the future you. Remember what she feels. Remember how she thinks. Think about her. Because she's waiting for you. She's there. She's yours to create. It really is up to you. And that's all for today. Bye for now. Oh.